Good morning, everybody, or at least it is for me. Welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. I haven't gotten any sleep last night. I've been busy working on stuff. My mind's all over the place, so excuse me if this isn't incredibly organized or whatever, or if I slip and I'm a little tired or whatever, because I'm more than a little tired. I'm a lot tired, but... I was just I was just thinking about you know this this topic of coming full circle and demystifying the awakening process. Um, no woo woo factor, just straight talk that the average person can understand. So I'm not going to get esoteric or spiritual, even even though I love to do that from time to time. No, sorry, not this time. And even as much as I love things like quantum physics, and hold on a minute, I'm on the air on a live broadcast right now. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Sorry about the interruption. Anyway, as I was saying, um, even as much as I love to put things in terms of simplified quantum physics and stuff like that. Nope, not going to do that either this time. I just, I really want to, to straight talk this. Totally straight talk. Simple straight talk. Because there's a lot of really weird stigmas and ideas and just really really crazy notions that people have about this so you know i don't want to go down the conspiracy theory freaking rabbit hole either i mean I, I just want to avoid all the crazy not talk about all the weird and just put this straight all right let's 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 look at it on the level that's going to be common sense to most people shit's fucked up on this planet right now like like on every freaking level like politically environmentally like you know it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look around and go wow you know shit's really fucked up and so I think we're going to start on that basic level freaking no-brainer. Um, of course, it's only a no-brainer for those who have been paying attention. Um, because we live, it, it, society's basically degraded into this politically correct, easily freaking but hurt, you know, neurotic, crazy thing. And most people, they kind of retreat into these <clears throat> crazy fantasy notions that government corruption is impossible and that corporations and government are your friends and they could never do anything wrong and that legislation is this magical force field that if you write something on paper this magical protective force field goes up and makes everything all bunnies kitties and unicorns like oh wow let's let's ban guns because if we put that on paper then then obviously a magical force field is going to going to go up and stop criminals from from being criminals and and while we're at it we should make murder illegal too oh wait it's already illegal and it doesn't stop criminals from murdering people oh shit yeah so people have these really weird ideas and i've even seen it to where like when people find out that in the 1800s that the united states was actually turned by Congress into a freaking for-profit corporation. People are like, well, what's wrong with that? Um, three words for you. Conflict of interest, okay? If something is a corporation, then they are 
only beholden to those who are the the shareholders, the investors, the stockholders. They they are not beholden unto anyone else. So yes, that's why we see these corporations raping the freaking planet. They dump toxic waste and shit into the oceans and into the rivers and do all this damage and there's laws against that. And the laws say, oh, if you do that, you're going to get fined. Well, for these mega corporations, these fines are like, you know, like like asking them to pay a penny. Like, oh, you're destroying the environment. Pay a penny. I mean, that, that's, that's really what it is on their level. I mean, if they get, like, fined, like, $5 million or whatever for doing something, that is freaking nothing. So... Unfortunately, a lot of people just have this, you know, this this really crazy idea about, oh, things written down on paper are magical force fields and governments are your friend and corporations are your friend. And we live in a happy, dappy, politically correct bunnies and kitties world. And they hold on to these ideas in order to avoid looking at how miserable they are that you know they're in jobs that they hate and hey can't blame them a lot of these jobs suck and the economy is really scary and everybody's worried like oh man i don't want me and my family to be homeless so i just got to focus on working all day and working all night and bringing in that money and hope to god i don't get laid off and, and there, you know there's all this stress from all that shit. and then of course as the environment gets more unhealthy and corporations do more shady shit, and of course, big pharma is nothing more than legalized freaking drug pushing. And when you look at all the nasty side effects of these drugs, those aren't the side effects. That's what the drug does. Hate to tell you, folks, that's what the freaking drug does. Because it's not the healthcare industry; it's the freaking death care industry. Okay, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but again. People are under the delusion, oh, well, well, killing people like that with lethal drugs, that would be against the law. There are laws against that. There's that magical protective force field created by Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy that keeps us all safe from the nasty terrorists. Terrorists don't wear turbans. They wear suits. You can find them in Congress. You can find them on Wall Street. You can find them in you know, the the freaking United Nations. You could find them in all sorts of places like that, but you're probably not going to find too many of them camped out in caves wearing turbans, but you'll find a whole hell of a lot of them in big freaking money. Because let's face it, war is a racket. It is, it is the most lucrative freaking industry. And, you know, look at Dick Cheney and Halliburton, right? You know, that's, that's you know, freaking making money on, on weapons of war. So, to me, it's not really a conspiracy theory to think that rich criminals will do criminal things with their money. Because, like, money doesn't make people good or evil. It just allows you to amplify and enhance what you already are. So if you're a really good person and you come into a lot of money, you're probably going to use a lot of that money to do good for humanity as best you can because that's what good people do. And, of course, a criminal, psychopath, scumbag who comes into a lot of money is going to have a lot more means to do even more criminal, psychopathic scumbaggery. I mean... I'm pretty sure I'm not talking delusion here. Okay. So, for those of us who have been in the process of awakening to the hard knocks reality of these things, and that the media has lied to us, and things are corrupt, and so on and so forth, and that the educational system is a brainwashing and indoctrination system, we start to question everything we were ever taught down to the smallest subtle level, which is good. That's, that's really what we need to do. That's a little thing called critical thinking and discernment. That's actually very good to do. So if you're doing that, 
And of course, your peers will discourage you from doing that because it's the equivalent of blasphemy. Well, they have the right to their opinion, but just generally, fuck them. You know, you don't need to run your life based on what other people say that you should, you know, friends, family, your peers, whatever. I mean, if they want to think you to be a blasphemous weirdo for having the audacity to think critically and to not blindly obey whatever, you know, egotistical fucking crazy thing that people say, like, oh, you need to do this this way, otherwise you're being rude and da-da-da. Again, we live in this politically correct, easily butthurt freaking society that is more worried about offending people with flags that actually had nothing to do with fucking slavery um then you know actually doing things like um you know putting an end to war and genocide and injustice and criminality and the increasing toxification of our environment and so on and so on and so on so yeah it's things have really gotten like neurotic to the nth fucking degree and I don't think it takes any level of spiritual anything, quantum anything, or conspiracy anything to look around and just see that things have gotten really fucking nuts. And there's a lot of people who are just dead ass asleep in their delusions because they're suffering from their diseases, a lot of which have been caused by the side effects of the medications, and they're drinking the poisons and eating the poisons, and suffering all kinds of stress and trauma while trying to work freaking 10 hour days making not nearly as much as they should while worrying about whether or not their they and their family are going to lose their house and yeah so they they like to escape into into tv america's top model whatever and they like to keep their little fantasies going and you know Sometimes they'll hit the wacky tobacco. Not saying there's anything wrong with hitting the wacky tobacco, mind you. Just saying, just like any neutral tool, it's definitely something that can be abused, especially if you're you're looking to use it as an escape. I mean, that sort of stuff is is great for focus meditations and things like that. But if you're using it to try to escape the fact that the world has been going to hell in a handbag. Um, that's, yeah, not really advised. That's an abuse of the substance. That is not a use of the substance. So, okay. Now that I've hopefully cleared that up enough to make the point that I'm not operating out of quantum land, wooey wooey land, or conspiracy land, and I'm just doing the straight talk, look around, wow, look at how fucked up shit is, just sort of straight deal. Now, I'm going to move into some misconceptions about the awakening process. Okay, because we've been programmed with this poor little me attitude. Oh, poor little me, I can't do anything, da-da-da. Which is bullshit. It's just psychological abuse that society's done to us. It's collective Stockholm Syndrome. Um, for as long as we're entrenched in, in that, when, when we're trying to move through the awakening process, there's some data that gets a little skewed by our own neurosis that we're in the process of clearing because you know we've got you know these different psychological filters that you know we we view reality through and you know it, they're they're just you know their their belief systems i mean Look at how many cultures believe all, all these different things and have different customs and stuff. So, yeah, you know, when you're raised in a society and you're raised with certain beliefs and values and whatever, yeah, those are filters. And I'd kind of say that um, human per perceptual filters are kind of broken up into five groups, in my opinion. Um, the first level filter is, you know, the what you might call the the growing up filter um you know when you're a little kid growing up you have to do your best to conform to whatever the adults want of you otherwise naughty naughty you're gonna get any trouble then of course there's the spiritual filter whether you want to call that spirituality or religion or a quote-unquote complete lack of religion such as atheism 
but really religion just means to bind it has nothing to do with god so to bind to a doctrine so in my opinion atheists have their own doctrine and i refer to that as pseudo intellectualism basically they think that because they're atheists they think they're better than anybody else and whoever disagrees with them they just automatically go you're stupid you're nuts shut up so yeah um it's, it, it, you can even call it the spiritual narcissism filter, whether you're an atheist or a new ager or a Christian or a Muslim or whatever. Spiritual narcissism filter. There we go. All right. Um, the third one, obviously, the gender filter, the, the battle of the sexes, you know, this idea that, oh, males and females just can't understand and relate to each other, which is just a bunch of bullshit because... It's that both males and females are just totally unwilling to listen to each other because they're both acting arrogantly because that's the way they've been taught. And they're afraid of judgment and afraid of drama and afraid of being, you know, being attacked and called stupid or being yelled at or whatever. And I can't really blame anybody for that. But if everybody just kind of calm the fuck down and be open to each other's perspectives, um, you know, I mean, I have female friends that can attest to the fact that male-female communication isn't this big, horrible, impossible thing that most people think it is. Um, filter number four, the logic filter, or what seems logical to us. And, of course, those of us who haven't really experienced that much logic are going to have a very limited logic filter, as opposed to those who have experienced a lot of logic. But in either case, logic is rather subjective, and common sense is not exactly very common. Um, the logic of a psychopath is that anybody who doesn't agree with them on everything is a delusional fuckhead and is insulting their intelligence and should be yelled at and domineered and, you know, whatever. So that is actually very logical for a control freak to think, because they think that they don't have an opinion. They just think that they know what reality is and anybody who tells them otherwise is just insulting their intelligence they actually have no clue that they're viewing anything from their own perspective because they're a human and not a robot and it's also neurologically true that we can only view things from our own perspective as einstein once said common sense is a collection of prejudices that we've accumulated by the time we're 18 years of age yeah so the fifth filter is then the professional filter, or you might also call it the politically correct fucking asshole filter. That, oh, we have to be all prissy and proper and do this this way and do this that way and blah, blah, blah. And if you don't do this this way, then you're not very professional. You're not conforming to the standards. So, so naughty, naughty you. It's a bad mark on your resume. You're not, you're not very professional, blah, blah, blah. But for those of us who are very professional, we have to we lock our minds into that profession. So we literally see all of reality, you know, through the eyes of that profession. I mean, look at someone who's like maybe totally hardcore classical physics scientists, right? Well, they're gonna be viewing all of life from that framework and might not really have have time within their professionalism to go into oh i don't know silly little human things like emotions that allow us to be creative and artistic and actually feel things and not be robot zombie drones you know that sort of thing so we got all these different these different filters and you know the brain works on associated memory so it's like we accumulate all these experiences and all these things get cross associated <clears throat> Like, let's take something as simple and, and basic as the idea of love. Well, if someone has grown up in a halfway decent family and they have halfway decent parents and siblings and halfway decent friends and a halfway decent life and so on and so forth, then, you know, the idea of love might be more in the cuddles and snuggles and bunnies and kitties sort of area of things. Whereas, someone who's grown up in a completely dysfunctional shitty you know psychologically or otherwise abusive family and all their peers and you know so-called friends have been assholes and 
friends like those you don't need enemies and they just had all these horrible nasty experiences and the idea of love is seen as a bad thing is seen as a danger is seen as a threat they hear love and they think uh oh that's me opening up to being screwed that's that's vulnerability that's oh if i if i do that then someone's going to come hurt me so you know obviously depending on what our experiences have been love is may or may not necessarily be viewed as a good wonderful positive thing it can also be viewed as this horrible scary dangerous thing um to quote agent smith i do believe it was agent smith who said this in the um matrix trilogy he said there is no other human emotion that is as insipid as love you know so he was very you know much in the category of you know oh love does nothing but hurt you love is love is a weakness get rid of that <laughs> you know so our perspectives really kind of depend on you know how we were brought up and the experiences therein of course we have a free will the center of the brain the frontal lobe that can take everything we think we know and give it the middle finger and just for the sake of i'm curious to see what happens we could go in a completely different direction only justified by yes i can do this because i'm a free will individual and we can experiment then and then you have things like creativity and innovation and invention and, you know, things like, oh, gee, I wonder if a jet plane is possible. Hmm. And then that line of thinking eventually leads to the invention of something like a jet plane, whereas, you know, nobody discovered jet plane trees where you could just, like, pick the jet planes off the tree. So, yeah, obviously the non-physical, non-existent in physical reality imagination mode had to conceive of something like a jet plane and then you know the 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 logic and the intellect and you know the engineering skills of humanity had to figure out how to put that together into a jet plane and then eventually you know here we are there's jet planes flying all over the place but they sure as hell didn't come out of a jet plane tree and they sure didn't exist before they existed, if you know what I mean. Because that's another problem people have. It's like, oh, if it's not real right now in front of me, then it can't happen. Fuck you. It's not real. You're delusional. It's like, okay. Every inventor of anything has been told that same thing. Because, you know, there's a lot of hubris and arrogance within humanity, the way society's been. So, yeah. Needless to say, we're starting to, to wake up out of the bullshit haze and deprogram all this crap. And one of the, the big ones people go through is thinking that, oh my God, in order to, to impact enough change that they can make a difference, that can really do anything, everybody's got to wake up at once. A minority of people could not possibly impact any change. So then you've got like, you know, nervous, stressed, paranoid people who want this full-blown awakening as of like five minutes ago, going around yelling and screaming fear into everybody's faces. And then, of course, you know, people not wanting all that screaming of fear in their faces. And of course you know, society programming us all to be in a constant state of fight or flight anyway. When people simply come forward with information that, shall we say, is not pleasant, like, hey, you know, there's people kind of fucking over the environment, then people are like, oh my god, fear porn, shut up, you're so negative, blah, blah. And then, so it's like, you know, they're actually being fear porny by pointing and, go and going, oh my god, fear porn. Because even though the data might not necessarily be nice, <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, it's just information. It's like, okay, yeah, we're trashing the environment. Not trying to be fear porny here, guys, but, you know, in order to clean up a mess, you have to be able to see it, right? That's common sense. 
imagine if there was a, a mess in the middle of a room and and he pointed it out and said hey let's let's clean up this mess over here and somebody said oh my god you're so negative you're you're fear porning you you shut up you're 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 just a government shill trying to sigh at me you you shut up <laughs> you know just because you're like uh there's there's a mess here maybe we can clean up the mess in the room shut up you're a conspiracy nut you're a psyop you're a, it's like okay it's it gets really freaking stupid so the whole idea that you need a majority of people to wake up in order to impact full-scale global change is a complete crock of shit it's a myth and that is not the way any change on this planet that you know we value highly has ever freaking happened it's always been the individual or the small group the individual with balls <laughs> the small group with balls and determination and motivation and drive and persistence that has always impacted change let's say let's say cars for example a very small minority invented that huh it didn't we're gonna have expressway systems and here's how we're gonna do it okay we all agree let's go do it now no that's that's not the way it happened they started out very small only a few people owned them at first they caught on, they inspired people, they became trendy. As they became more of a trend, more and more people started purchasing them and owning them. At first, only the more wealthy people could do it, obviously, because of the supply and demand factor. Um, if you don't have a high demand, then you can't mass produce, which means individual units are not as cheap so you know the cost of something is obviously a hell of a lot more expensive but if you've got a high demand then you can produce on mass and then obviously um the price for each thing starts to come you know dramatically down so as things got popular and more trendy that is how they pretty much impacted society so now you've got cars just about everywhere same with cell phones i mean I don't recall anybody taking a vote, like, you know, getting on, like, TV or something and, like, okay, world, we got this idea for a cell phone. Um, do we have consensus? Like, so we're all going to agree to use this, right? Yeah, yeah, like, that totally didn't happen. I mean, again, it was just trends in, you know, inspiring people and, and more people started using them and eventually it just hit a critical mass and then you know lo and behold here we are playing fucking angry birds on our cell phones and whatever that didn't happen overnight even the internet had humble origins and became trendy you had the private network that the governments and businesses and all that you know ran it was archaic back in the day. It was called ARPANET. That's where, like, freaking um, Al Gore is like, I invented the interweb. Shut up. No, you fucking didn't. You were, like, one of the many people who worked on ARPANET. So, Al Gore, shut your fucking hole now, you idiot. Thank you. Okay, so there was that. And then, you know, Ward Christensen and Randy Seuss in, in 1978, when they were, like, snowed in, they were like, hey, we're all sick of Post-it notes and shit. Let's make an electronic bulletin board system. <coughs> Excuse me. So throughout the 80s and 90s, these electronic bulletin board systems that were all dial up, they, you know, more and more people started running them and they got more trendy. And then as the ARPANET thing got, got bigger, the information superhighway was kind of formed by emerging of the BBS scene and in the whole ARPANET thing. So now BBSs could be accessible long distance without like dialing phone numbers and all that. And that ended up turning into like the freaking dot com boom. So then you've got like, oh, dial up internet for $15 a month and 56K and 
you know, instead of paying shitloads of money. And then there was the advent of broadband, and boom, everyone's going broadband. And now, you know, we're, we're freaking ranting on live streaming freaking YouTube videos and shit now. Yay. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't get here overnight. And there sure as hell wasn't a voting poll back in the 80s or something like, okay, guys, we're going to make the internet. Do we have consensus? Huh? No, that's, no, no. That's not the way it friggin' happened at all. So, it happened the way Gandhi says things happen. Be the change you want to create. You can't convince people of anything. You can't shove information down their throat, but you can be a living example of how to do things differently. And then people are looking at you like, wow, how are you doing that? And then they want to know how to do it too. And click, the mind opens. Or they're looking at you like, oh my god, how are you doing that? You're a stupid idiot. Fuck you. And they like shun you and walk away and whatever because they think that the change you're being is really, you know scary and uncalled for and whatever and whatever you know let the butt hurt flow through them and your path to the dark side will be complete yeah so you know let them go do the whole like vader fucking sith thing and you know cry a fucking tantrum whatever that's their right to choose that if they want to well meanwhile the people who think that the example you're setting is like really fucking cool they're gonna start you know, being interested and asking questions and stuff. And, uh, of course, that point right there, there's a bit of a, a slippery slope. Um, what I mean is, don't become a fucking guru. Um, everybody's an equal human, and a lot of times when people hit that that crossroads, if, like, they see, oh, I'm being the change, and, and people are interested, and they want to know how I'm doing it. They start to get like a really big fucking head and they start to think that they're like better than everyone else. Like, I am the guru. My way is the only way. It's like, oh, you're falling back into the old societal programming fucker and you don't even realize it. So, and they're walking around like going, I am so awakened, blah, blah. I am a truther. Fuck the Illuminati. You're a sheep. I know it all, or I am so spiritual, and I channel the poo-poo from the doo-doo system, and I am the high and mighty, all of the baba, wah, 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 and anybody who does not listen to me is a shithead, and I shun you, and yeah, so, you know, the freaking narcissism factor, so, like, be very, very careful um, with that, because if, um, if whoever you're working with and dealing with doesn't view you as a freaking equal and doesn't want to collaborate with you as both of you being sovereign and working together as, as you know, independent, sovereign, mature people collaborating, sharing ideas, getting things going, if they don't want to work on that level – and they just want to be like an energetically vampiric, psychopathic, control freak jag off them. Let them go do their thing by themselves. That's that's not who you want to be dealing with. And you certainly don't want to become that. So as you start seeing that you're inspiring people, please do your best to try not to get a big hit. Okay, so... If you've got that far, then there's the whole impatience and, you know, self-worth image issues and, and stuff like that. Um, it's okay to have those. Give yourself permission to feel what you feel. It'll pass like a storm. Because if you don't do that, and then you're seeing it as like an external enemy and going into these negative feedback loops and driving yourself neurotic and becoming a basket case and, yeah that's you don't really want to do that and i've seen a lot of people do that stuff especially when they start to awaken and maybe they get entrepreneurial and they actually start being the change by you know creating new ways to make money and shit but then they start getting worried like oh my god i'm successful well what if what if that success ends 
I need to make sure that that doesn't end. I need to create all these neurotic protocols and policies and strict things to stick to. And I need to stick to them and be neurotic and then shove all these protocols and policies down everyone's throat and say, oh, this is the only way to do business and da 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 da. So then you've got like a lot of these entrepreneurs becoming complete and total freaking basket cases. So you want to be careful there too and respect respect your pace of learning and know that you're not a robot and sometimes things are going to take longer than you want them to take that doesn't mean anything has failed sometimes there's going to be setbacks it doesn't mean anything has failed sometimes you're going to make mistakes that's a part of the learning process sometimes you're not going to know things that doesn't mean you can't know it's not a dead end of knowledge it's the beginning of knowledge so there, there's a lot of these little mind fuck roadblocks people hit, but just, you know, give yourself permission to be the, the baby that's learning how to walk and in the process is falling a lot. That, that doesn't mean you fail. So within your process of your own evolution, your own trial and error, um, if you're brave enough to allow people to see that, to witness that, and I know there's a, a bit of a hesitance to let people do that because, you know, we're sitting there thinking, oh, my God, what do people think? They're going to think I'm stupid. Yeah, that's what they're going to think. And they're going to laugh at me and shun me. And you know what? Some people will think you're stupid. And some people will laugh at you. And some people will shun you. And, and, and fuck them. They can go play a game of hide and go fuck themselves. They're irrelevant and unimportant. The people who are relevant and important are the ones who are going to look at you going through your process and feel better because they'll see you're human too. They'll see you're not some guru sitting on a cloud. They'll be able to relate to you. They'll be able to go, oh, look, they're going through their process of learning too, like any other human. They're not a superhuman guru from on high that is descended from heaven to save us all from the evils of whatever. Then they'll be able to relate to you and be like, wow. I can relate to how they're feeling about that. I can relate to how they're thinking about that. Yeah, I've wow, I've totally been there. I'm there right now. And they might be a little farther ahead than I am, but but that's good. They, they've paved the way a little bit, but but they can relate to me and I can relate to them. And this is so cool. And I'm, I'm not alone. I don't have to feel like this miserable, lonely, wretch, waste of space that has no point, power, or purpose. And, and, and you know, halfway tempted to go blow my brains out and, you know, all this and that then you know, you're giving people hope by allowing people to see that, yeah, you're human too. You're learning through trial and error. It's all good. You don't need to resort to intellectual narcissism or spiritual narcissism or atheist narcissism or any other kind of narcissism for that matter. And you don't have to drive yourself neurotic. So yeah. So being that change and inspiring people one at a time, it might seem slower than your ego wants it to be in the short run. But in the long run, and by the way, that long run is actually a lot shorter of a run than you think. Just ego is really freaking impatient and wants to plant a tree seed today up a 40-foot tree tomorrow and cries a fucking bitch fit when it doesn't happen. But, you know... When you inspire people like that, you know, person by person by person, the math is exponential. It's tenfold. I mean, whip out your calculator if you want. You inspire 10 people who each inspire 10 people who then each of them inspire 10 people. Actually, I'm going to whip out my calculator right now. It's not a physical calculator. It's a piece of software, but, you know, okay. So let's say I inspire 10 people. Or you inspire 10 people. Or the guy down the street inspires 10 people. Or the girl next door. Whoever, whatever. 10 people. And let's say they each inspire 10 people. So you multiply that by 10. Obviously, you've got 100. Now let's say those 100 people inspire 10 people. Ooh, now you've got a thousand. Multiply that by 10. 10,000. Another 10. 100,000. Look at that. It didn't take too many jumps either. 
Now, if you're really brave and you're really authentic and you learn to respect other people's rights to freedom to do things like think negatively of you and think you're a bastard and so on and so forth and you're not trying to be a Nazi and vampire them and going, shut up, you're not allowed to do that. And you're genuinely able to just be like, cool, you know, that's that's your right to think and feel as you wish and and I, I respect that and I value freedom and that's all good. Obviously, I don't believe you know, and I don't agree with what you're saying, and I think you can play a game of fighting to fuck yourself, and you're a complete prick, but even so, I totally respect your right to think what you think and feel how you feel and totally express that, and I don't think you're some naughty, horrible, evil person for having a less than favorable opinion of me. Now, when you can set that sort of example, then, you know, most of the drama idiots really don't want to deal with you. And then that leaves more of the people who are really wanting to move more in a forward direction. So guess what that means? That means you're probably going to inspire quite a bit more than just only 10 people. And so is everyone else. And everybody, even most of the, most of the greatest speakers out there, or shall we say, who we all look at them and go, wow, they're a great speaker. You know, there's like a pretty good consensus there, you know, whether it's tens of thousands or millions or whatever people looking at them going like, yeah, they're a great speaker. They've accomplished this. Wow, cool, you know. The people that are doing that, they've got the same insecurities as, as the rest of us. They, they started off thinking, oh, my God, who's going to care about what I have to say? Who's gonna? Who's honestly going to give a shit? How? Who could I possibly fucking inspire? Like, like you know, who would give a shit about anything I have to say? Who would find anything I have to say helpful? Everybody thinks like that. The person you think is the most awesome freaking speaker on the planet has that little voice in the back of their head going, "Who am I? Why is anybody gonna care about me or what I have to say or whatever?" But they've chosen to just. Give the middle finger to that voice and be like, if only one person cares or no one cares or a thousand people cares, who cares how many people care or not? It's not a freaking contest. It's about my right to be myself and whoever it inspires or not, so be it, whatever. Who doesn't like it or not, whatever. It doesn't matter because the idea that I have the right to be who I am, that alone is justification enough for me to be me and say what I want to say and whoever likes it cool, whoever doesn't, that's fine too. And anybody who happens to not give a shit, well, cool. That's their right to just totally not give a shit and look at that and go, wow, who's this lame idiot? I don't want to listen to that bullshit. So, you know, you're, you're never going to please everybody. You can't appease anybody. Because all, all appeasement is is trying to appease your own psychological projection of what your ego assumes the other person wants of you. So you're not even really appeasing the other person. You're appeasing yourself, your own psychological projection that you put over that other person. So appeasement is a complete and total epic fail. Or like Winston Churchill once said, love isn't appeasement, appeasement is. <laughs> and I agree with him. It's a totally different thing. And also, the idea of unconditional love has nothing to do with um, thinking positive about someone or hugs and kisses or bunnies and kitties and singing kumbaya on the campfire or ascending to the fifth dimension or whatever the fuck. No. Unconditional love, if you exit the societal view of it, is just a euphemistic way of saying that you accept that something is something or someone is what it is. Now, acceptance doesn't mean to submit. It doesn't mean to like it. It doesn't mean to approve of it. Um, you accept that lightning is lightning, don't you? You accept that water is water. You accept that rattlesnakes are rattlesnakes. You're not trying to force a rattlesnake to be a kitten. You're not trying to force water into becoming a brick wall. You're you're not trying to force lightning to become jello pudding. <laughs> you know, you are unconditionally accepting that these things are what they are. 
And with that unconditional acceptance, the love, or let's use a, a better word, maybe appreciation and respect come into play. You can appreciate and respect that rattlesnake that, you know, it might eat rats that might otherwise infest your house if it, if it didn't. Um, you might really respect and appreciate lightning because, you know, that's electricity and without electricity we'd all be Amish and you wouldn't be listening to me right now. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be listening to anything, really. You wouldn't even have lights. You wouldn't have shit without electricity. All, all the conveniences you take for granted, you'd have none of it. And of course, without water, you'd be fucking dead. Because your body is made up of 80% of the stuff. So, it doesn't mean that you, you want to play with rattlesnakes just because you respect and appreciate them. It doesn't mean you want to give them a hug. It, it, you could, I mean, obviously, anyone with any good sense is going to want to stay way the fuck away from a rattlesnake because it's a fucking rattlesnake, man. And, of course, you're not going to want to try to to hug and kiss water because, you know, if you go down to a bo the bottom of the pool and have a nice long cuddle session with water without an oxygen tank, you're fucking dead, and it's kind of bad, and of course with electricity, you don't want to try to cuddle that either, otherwise you're going to burn to a crisp and be equally dead, so, yeah. Um, has nothing to do with, with approval and hugs and kisses and whatever. It just has to do with removing judgment egotistical judgments so that your mind isn't constipated so it's clear and you could tell the difference between one thing and another you have critical thinking you have discernment let you do things like use fire as a tool instead of burning the shit out of yourself you get the idea here hopefully so of course and yes I'm drinking uh beverage here while I'm talking, take little breaks here, so if you hear a little odd noises from me, that's what that is. Anyway, so obviously as you're going through your own processes of, you know, deprogramming and sorting out the mess in your head and trying to get your brain to stop going to war with itself, and being the change that you want to create, and others are looking at you like, wow, that's that's cool how, how you're doing that, and then they start doing that too and you know you're kind of divorcing yourself from the butthurt side of the force um once enough people get into that more clear thinking not so butthurt mode then those people can collaborate with each other to create really awesome things and have profound impact and change it only takes a minority to fix the problems because the majority are sheep and, and they'll just follow whoever's in charge. And I don't necessarily mean that in, in, a, in a leader sense. I don't necessarily mean that it's like a boss or Obama or whatever. I mean it more like trends and memes because that's what everything is anyway. You know, things that are popular, things that are trendy. Set the trend, set the, set the meme. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> you know. It's that sort of an idea. And that's what our entire society is built on. I mean, look at how much freaking advertising there is everywhere. Everything's a freaking meme. Trying to popularize everything and get the sheep to follow so that you can reel in all that money. Yay. You know, so it's, it's all about that. So when you become the change you want to create, and other people start to follow suit from your inspiration, once that hits critical mass, then it starts to become trendy. So you don't need to get the masses on your all on your side at once with the awakening process. The, the dumb masses can remain dumb and still follow a trend and be about as oblivious as the parrot going, how I want a cracker? How I want a cracker? Wah! Sheepy wants some fluoride. Wah! You know, so 
it's kind of like that. They don't they don't have to cognize and understand every little freaking thing just to follow a popular trend. They they don't need to do that. As a matter of fact, during the American Revolution, only three percent of the population even knew what the hell was going on, much less participated at the time. The vast majority of the population didn't even know anything was going on, and how could they? They didn't have mass media, they didn't have TV, they didn't have the internet. It took like six months to go from anywhere to anywhere else in the United States via stagecoach. Didn't have cars, didn't have planes, didn't have none of that. Information traveled very freaking slowly. So, the vast majority of the population of the United States was completely oblivious to the fact that there was an American Revolution going on. And that's a part of where you might have heard the term the three percenters. That's where that, that term comes from. It's the acknowledgement that you only need 3% to hit critical mass to be able to actually implement you know, some sort of globally impacting change. That you don't need to have everybody and their mother and their brother's cousin fully on board with you before you can move an inch. So, hopefully, I am making this point as clear as possible. Because, you know what? It doesn't matter how the towers fell on 9-11 or whether or not there are aliens or who's doing what with what or or who's right about what mathematical formula and who's not or whose spiritual practice is better than someone else's or whose fucking confederate flag is actually something worth giving a shit about or not or blah 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 all that bullshit is just petty high schoolish bickering, dick wagging, fish shaking. You know, it, it, it's it's the shit we've been taught to do. So even within this quote unquote awakening process, the people who are awakening who want to get to get together with other mature sovereign people and actually do something about things or or, or at least pass ideas back and forth for what could be implemented. Um, those people need to get rid of that that dickwag drive first, that domineering drive. And be more in a drive to not only share ideas, but be open-minded to other people's ideas. Um, have little concepts like agreeing to disagree instead of like calling each other's shills and idiots and and Oh, I don't like what that person said about that, so they're a motherfucker, and I'm not going to deal with them anymore. Nah, 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 nah. That's why I hate the fucking truth movement, because they are totally like that. Truth movement sucks a dick. I'm sorry. I mean, they're well-intended. Hopefully they eventually wake up, which it's really hard to wake people up when they don't know they're asleep. <laughs> it's like... Just, you know, these people think they've exited the Matrix. I'm outside the Matrix now. Yeah, look at me. When really that's like saying, I know I have cancer now, so that means I'm magically cured of the cancer. But all you other people who have the cancer but don't know, you have it because you don't know you have it. But as soon as you know you have it, you're magically cured. It sounds completely fucking retarded, doesn't it? Well, that's how truthers in general tend to come off. I'm the high and almighty. I have a few pieces of knowledge. So that makes me God's gift to this planet. Yes, ooh, follow me and listen to my radio shows and my TV shows and buy my books. And oh my God, I'm like the best thing to whatever. And oh, you must follow me and da 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 And if you don't, oh... You're a shill, or you're a psyop, or you're da 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 blah blah. Insert rampant fucking paranoia everywhere. And it's like, oh my god, shut up. So yeah, hopefully at least some people listening to this can kind of see and understand the ridiculousness of the situation, and can understand that. 
there there is an awakening process going on I see more and more people waking up every day and even even average people just even though that they don't know a lot of the details about stuff but their paradigms are starting to be defied and they're starting to see that it isn't this you know candy land bunnies kitties rainbows oh the government and corporations are your friend and everything's perfect and tra la 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 they, they start to see that the world just isn't freaking like that and they're like wow you know I'm not really sure as to exactly what's wrong but there's something seriously wrong and you know it's like that wasn't even in their awareness before and they might even go so far as to realize that politics is you know two wings of the same bird left wing right wing one bird all controlled by the same greedy corporate conflicts of interests yeah yeah that's pretty much what it's become corporations fuck everybody else for profit bend over basically and that's totally not a conspiracy theory that's just everyday life look around it's everywhere but it's great because at this point more and more people are waking up because the more crazy things get it just it starts snapping people out of their slumber because you know it crosses a line with people and, and then they realize oh my god the world isn't what I thought it was what the fuck is going on here and then they, they're actually asking questions instead of making assumptions and going, I'm right about everything. Shut up. Fuck you. Reality's the way I say it is. So then they're starting to question, like, wow, maybe I've been the cosmic schmuck here. Although, if you can if you can ask whether or not you're the cosmic sh schmuck, you're probably not the cosmic schmuck. But if you're sitting there thinking, there's no way I could be the cosmic schmuck then <laughs> you're probably the cosmic schmuck and that's a euphemism by the way schmuck meaning idiot cosmic meaning big um big idiot that's another thing too now that i've reminded myself people so anally sticking to word semantics as if there's only one in one context only for any given word like I've lost track of how many times I've euphemistically used the word Nazi to represent just, just control freak, you know, just like, hey, man, don't be a Nazi. You know, it's kind of like a slang, like, you know, don't be a control freak. Don't, you know, don't be such a Nazi. Don't be a control freak. Don't be a dictator. Don't be a, you know, don't, don't be throwing your weight around on me. I'm not your bitch, you know, like that sort of thing. But people take it so literally like, oh my God, what does the Holocaust and the deaths of Jews have to do with what you're saying? It's like, dude, I, it's like, whoa, you know, talk about narrow freaking minded. It's like, wait a minute, what you're saying? I'm not allowed to use the word Nazi in regards to a control freaky attitude. I mean, it's like people get so hung up and they fight, and they bicker and bitch over fucking words, dude. It's like words semantics irrelevant fucking semantics like two little kids fighting over a freaking toy truck it's fucking ridiculous so like that's another thing too and you know that's that's also why i kind of rant about these things in, in the way i do and, and and bring these things up because not enough people are talking about dichotomies which is exactly what this sort of shit is and Number two, when I bring it up, I am sure to offend everybody who who wants to remain stuck in that egotism to, to such an amazing degree that they just they tune out. They don't even want to deal with me or comment or whatever. And guess what? That's peace. World peace isn't everyone agreeing with each other and singing Kumbaya around a campfire. That's actually Nazism. Nazism says everybody thinks the same way and gets along. That's not peace. That's the third fucking right. What peace is, is an end to conflict. So peace is respecting someone's right to hate you and vice versa and so on to the point to where you don't feel the need to go beat the shit out of them or kill them simply just because you can't stand the sight of them. Um, at that point, both people just decide to go their separate ways and not deal with each other and thus there is no conflict and a lack of conflict is peace. So people are 
learning about ideas like this it's it, these things are very new to most people these are not the these are not the reactions most people have and for the people who are deprogramming quote unquote and learning about the stuff that's totally a part of you know the awakening process i mean do I think there are esoteric factors to it? Yeah. Quantum factors? Yeah. Quote unquote conspiracy factors, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, all that stuff's there, but it's still that's not that's all semantics. That's that's just more wordplay. Because until until that three percent is at the point enough to really collectively take some amazingly profound action, then let's face it. Most of us are not going to esoterically find out whether or not we can ascend to the next dimension or or exactly how the World Trade Center came down or or blah -de blah -de blah because we're not in a position to explore that because we're too busy being a bunch of neurotic little fucking assholes as a bunch of psychopath control freaks rule the freaking planet as most people are just, you know, being freaking wage slaves hoping they don't get laid off so that their family doesn't end up homeless and dead. And for anybody who's halfway tempted to be like, oh my God, Dave, you're being so negative. No, I'm not. As a matter of fact, I view the negative as a positive opportunity for positive change. If you are viewing the negative as negative, then <laughs> I hate to tell you, you're the one being negative. Because if you were so positive, you would be wanting to figure out how to take these negative circumstances and use them as positive opportunities for creating positive change because that my friends is being the change you want to create if you're going to point your finger and go oh my god shut up that's that's negative that's einstein's definition of insanity that's just another classic case of if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you've always gotten yeah totally and of course to end this off because the title says coming full circle demystifying the awakening process um i want to mention the full circle project and you can go to www.fullcircleproject.net or you can hop onto facebook and you can type in full circle project. And as a matter of fact, just for a moment here, I'm, I'm just going to do some screen sharing right quick. I know I've had the I've had the video off because I haven't really felt like being on video because right now because like yeah I've been up all night and I probably look worse than I feel, <laughs> but. You know, you're, so you're probably used to just there being a blank screen for this one. So now I'm just bringing your attention to the fact that I am enabling screen share right. Excuse me, right now. <clears throat> and here is the infinite limbo of of Google Hangout. How cool is that? Okay, so there we go. The Full Circle Project, and that is run by Max Egan. And it's pretty cool. Supporting effective common sense action with a principal aim to bring mankind full circle to their natural state of strength and abundance. And if you go to fullcircleproject.net, it's a pretty simple, basic um, interface for the moment, but I'm sure it'll advance as time goes on. But the primary point behind it, see where you can uh, adjust the space on distance? You see, obviously, the more you can work together in like-minded groups that aren't a bunch of bickering fucking idiots, <laughs> um, the more inspiring 
you know, you could be as far as creating that change. But the problem, and God, especially if you live in a big city, like I live in Chicago, and, you know, I've, I've basically got roughly like, you know, 15 million people around me, give or take, and it's really hard to tell who is awakened on, you know, the, you know, the sort of levels that I'm talking about and who is just dead ass asleep, you know, idiot that's just gonna, if you try to talk to them, it's gonna look at you and be like, God, you're a conspiracy nut. Or if they even are awakened enough to basically realize that the world isn't all bunnies and kitty cats and rainbows, that they still might be too much into a state of into a state of fear, which would then be the equivalent of trying to have kindergartners rebuild the World Trade Center and just have little kids getting hurt on power tools. So that's not going to work either. So you need to be able to find people who are of like mind, and it's really hard to sort that out. I mean, you're not going to want to walk through a city. Excuse me, trying to figure that out. And even if you were to try to use Facebook instead of a physical walk through the city, well, then it's just a virtual walk through the city because you've still got no way of sorting out who's who and what's what. Whereas with things like the Full Circle Project, um, you're not even going to have an account on here unless you are like-minded enough to understand why having an account on here might be a good idea. So then you could find people on here and start, you know, getting some ideas going back and forth and in-person collaboration and stuff. So it basically makes the unfindable findable. Yay! So pretty damn cool. It's got a humble beginning so far. I mean, it just launched the other day. But... It just has obscene potential. It's taking off fast. I mean, the Facebook page here has been up for less than a day. It's already got 410 likes. And yeah, I mean, this shit's going to go freaking viral. And, oh, look, they're even using some graphics that I made. Like, check that out. Paradigm shift in educational comedy. There you go. And I, I took a Max Egan quote from the... Um, the video um, I put together, which is obviously uh, linked up in here. Oh, excuse me. And you can find that on our YouTube channel. It's PSAC 2015 <coughs> featuring Max Egan. Full Circle Project full spectrum response Yay. and of course this quote is now is the time that we can actually put something cohesive and unified together and stand up in a full spectrum response we don't need resistance we need response the term resistance is actually a loaded term it makes you believe that you must resist that which is inevitable well I am not resisting, I am responding, because I do not think that their control grid is inevitable at all. I think what is inevitable is human freedom. That will come if we choose to stand up and in and <clears throat> excuse me, if we choose to stand up and respond to what our employees in government are doing. So yeah, I mean, we've kind of forgotten that, that these people are our employees. We act like they are our masters. We act like they are our gods. We don't really have that awareness of, hey, you guys are supposed to be working for us. It's more like they write shit down on paper. We blindly obey like a bunch of fucking idiots. You know, as if it was God writing out the Ten Commandments or some shit. They write all write out all the psychopathic legislature, and it's like, well, it's the law. Somebody wrote it down. I guess I gotta obey it now. Yeah. Fucking retarded.
if the law is morally fucking bankrupt, no, you do not have an obligation to obey it. If it was a law that you have to chop off your fucking dick, are you going to be like, oh, I gotta chop my cock off now because it's a law? No, you're probably going to not obey that one. So, yeah. You're probably not going to be like, Little Willie, I'm going to miss you. No, you're not going to freaking do that. You're going to be like, what? You want me to cut my dick off? What the fuck? I'm not doing that. So, like, hopefully that's not what it will take for you to wake up. But, you know. So, yeah, Hillary for prison. That's funny. <laughs> I made this graphic too. Full circle project, full spectrum response. It's time to hold the cacistocracy accountable for breach of trust. Cacistocracy is defined simply as when the most incompetent of a nation are running it. And sadly, that's not just the United States and that's not just the Obama administration. Things have gotten pretty fucked all the way across the board. I wish I could say that the Obama administration is some epic exception to some sort of utopian fantasy freaking rule, but sorry, utopian fantasies are fantasies, and uh, yeah, so let's move out of delusional land, get with the real world. Then I use this quote from Inception, awesome freaking movie. What is the most resilient parasite? A bacteria? A virus? An intestinal worm? An idea. Resilient. Highly contagious. Once an idea has taken hold of the brain, it's almost impossible to eradicate. An idea that is fully formed, fully understood, that sticks right in there somewhere. And that was said by Leonardo, yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio on Inception. Badass awesome movie. Ooh, paradigm shift logo. <laughs> okay. And then we go down a little more. Do -ba -doom -boom -boom -ba -doom -boom -boom. And there's a video I was talking about. PSEC 2015, Max Egan, Full Circle Project, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So. Yep. yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. This. Oh, I just noticed this. Um, I actually thought that they just put in the YouTube video, but apparently they, they put in, you know, a full-blown uh, blog entry. I, I just noticed that. I must be really freaking dang tired today. That's pretty badass. Check that out. Come on, web browser. There we go. Yeah. PSEC 2015. Full Circle Project. Full Spectrum Response. With Speaker Max Egan. So on and so on. Yeah. Check that out. They put it right up there. I, I just noticed that they, <laughs> that they did that. I thought they had only just linked to um, the YouTube video. But they actually made it a freaking uh, blog entry. So yeah, I actually... See, I've been freaking half asleep. <laughs> I don't mean asleep in awareness-wise. Obviously, I mean, like, literally, like, it's 5.32 a.m. and I haven't slept all night and shit. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty freaking badass. Um, I want to just go to blog.fullcircleproject.net. Cool, yeah, yeah. Let's see what other articles and stuff they have so far. Just for shits and giggles. Firefox decides to get a different clue. There we go. This is actually a pretty good one, though. 
Beyond Apathy one about water fluoridation. I, I watched that one. That was pretty cool. Nice. Nifty little blog page here. Um, I'm not sure if they're using a homebrew blog or if it's WordPress or, or what it is. I don't know. I know that the main um, Full Circle Project um, interface for, you know, www.fullcircleproject.net, um, that is their own, you know, homebrew, um, you know, custom interface and all that. So it's not like they're using some other back end or something. This is like totally and purely a custom job. It's pretty slick. Um, so I'm not sure if they're doing that same thing with the blog here or if it's RSS feedable or um whatever the case may be or whatever they're using but i do know that the full circle project you know interface for for the system is totally homebrew which is pretty cool um okay let's check and see if it's got that um subscribe to the blog main feed and then there's a comment feed okay yeah check that out bam right there cool cool Okay, nice. That answers that question. <laughs>